All right, there we have it. I'm live again, uh, as I am going to be every Wednesday from now on. I know that's getting warm out there, guys. Uh, I'm 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 kind of looking out the window here, going, "Ooh, be nice to be on my bike right now." Uh, it is beautiful out there. I'm not even sure how many people are going to tune in today, uh, and that's totally fine. Uh, it's it, it's totally fine. We are just uh, if you're if you got friends who are out there on their bikes, good for them. I would love to be on mine right now. Uh, but that's okay. I've had an incredible day, actually. We're going to give it a couple minutes before we get started. I have had an incredible day. Uh, I just was, was working on my message for this week. I'm, I'm way ahead of where I normally am on my messages. Uh, talking about being full of the Holy Spirit, and it's just been really cool as God convicts me. I, I love how God convicts me, uh, probably more than he usually convicts the people that I'm preaching to, so this is great. Uh, but also today, as I was just, I was just reflecting on... How incredible God is. We serve a God who just answers prayers all the time in his, in the most unique and interesting and wild ways. Um, and Al, I don't care how many kilometers you did on your bike. Leave me alone. Um, I'm glad you got to enjoy your bike today. So, uh, um, but yes, maybe tomorrow I will enjoy my bike. Uh, so, but yeah, I want to tell you, I, I'm looking today at four today, uh, give it one more minute maybe. And then I want to tell you the story of the time I broke my neck, um, and about how God worked through that and how I might've been a little bit dumb, maybe a little bit foolish as per my usual way of doing things where I could have probably, um, been feeling much better even today if I had, hadn't been so foolish when I was younger. I think a lot of people can probably speak to their, their younger foolishness. Uh, but I'm glad for those who are here. If you're here, uh, feel free to just just let me know that you're you're tuned in, and uh, we're gonna get started here right away. I know a lot of people just like to watch these later because they're they're joining kind of halfway through. Um, so what we're gonna do is a story I've told before, uh, kind of in brief little increments. And so today I'm gonna actually tell the kind of the the, the fullness of the story uh, about what happened. So uh, so here's the story about the time I broke my neck and how God came through for me. Uh, and it starts off, uh, I was 16 years old. Uh, I was uh, working on the farm. Uh, so so growing up, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, people always looked at us and they thought we had a lot of money. This is not that important a story, but it lets people check in. Uh, and like I remember we, we'd get these like, oh, hey, Dustin. We'd get these like, we call them uh, uh, crispy rice instead of rice crispy. So you know if a lot of families buy rice krispies. It's the cheapest thing to buy. It's not. You can get crispy rice. Uh, it's the stuff that falls out of the back of a truck or something, these no-name brands. And, and we, we were like that. And, and we got blessed. Somebody helped my dad put these biotechs up. And they put their pigs in our biotechs. And all the, that we had to do, uh, hi, Nita, all that we had to do was we had to run these biotechs. Uh, but the problem was even in the job, they blessed my dad. We could have extra income. As kids, we were at work every morning uh, working with those uh, lovely pigs Um you know, I think when, when God cast the uh, the demons into the pigs, uh, for some reason they stayed in pigs to this day. Uh, I'm not a really big fan of pigs anymore unless they're in bacon form. Um, so we had these 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 crazy pigs on the farm, and we had biotechs, which means that they're inside and they're outside, and a lot of mud outside. And what we had to do is when the mud got too bad, we'd take our tractor and we'd uh, we'd lift we'd lift these big 1,300 pound bales. We'd lift them up over the over the wall, put them down the other side, cut the strings, and then we'd lift it up. and And my job was to kind of dr dump it and flip it at the same time and help roll these things out. My brothers at that time, I think, were okay. So Kendall would have been 12, 10 and twelve. My bro that's how old my brothers were at the time. And so it took a lot of power for us to roll these bales. And so that was my job: get on the tractor and do that. Uh, but we, the tractor we owned was. Let's say it had passed its day many, many years ago. And so I'm going to use a couple term, terms that people who use the tractors know. Usually the clutch on the tractor is like that big. you got a lot of room to move your foot up and down. Ours was about that tall. You had to use the heel. I was a skinny little kid, just over 100 pounds. I had to have my heel on that thing and push with all my power or the clutch would pop. Uh, we didn't have... We didn't have... Um, what was it that we didn't have... We didn't, sorry, Marilyn, I don't even know how to get you your audio. Uh, does everybody else have audio? Hopefully everybody else has audio. Nobody else has mentioned no audio yet. Um, so hopefully you're all getting audio. Um, okay, they got it. Okay, so I'm on this tractor. Uh, so the clutch is worn down. Um, the, 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 the shift the, to, to move the, the, the bucket or to move the forks, uh, it would stick, and it didn't have the auto adjust. Uh, so it was a bit tricky. You'd lift and turn at the same time 
or that fork would come up and it would want to flip things over on top of you. So you have to be really careful. So we get to the farm and, and uh, we, we still lived in town, but we had this farm. So uh, I was 16. I could drive out to the farm on my own. I was super pumped. Bring my little brothers with me. I was back before the graduated drivers. And so here we're at the farm. We're, we're a couple miles out of town. And I start to work and I go to lift this bale and I'm a 16 year old. I'm distracted. So we cut all, we're going to put it over the edge and then cut the strings. And I start lifting it and I look at my brother and I say something and I let go of the lever. And uh, I'm talking to him, talking to him. And all of a sudden, my brother on the other side, I think it was Kendall, yelled, watch out. Because what happened was that, that gear shift, that lever, it had stuck. So while I'm talking over here to my one brother, that bucket is lifting up, lifting up, lifting. I'm getting way above my head. And I turned. And as I realized what was happening, I panicked. And I leaned back. And my foot fell off the clutch. So now this tractor jerks forward. Uh, the bale's up here. It's moved all the way above my head. Tractor jerks forward. And the bale stays right there. And this bale... This crazy thing, basically 1,300 pounds before I'd even cut the strings, drops right onto the tractor. Obviously, there's no box or anything. It breaks the light. It breaks the lights that are at the same height as you can't even see it on my chair. And I'll see if I can lift this chair up. Oh, no, you still can't see it. It's the same height as the, the, the armrests on a chair. That's how high those fenders are. And it breaks the lights on the fenders. And I'm sitting right there. This thing, this thing literally drops, bounces off the fenders, and goes backwards, literally, and just praise the Lord, it fell off of the tractor. It literally bounced off of the tractor, and I'm laying there. I have just completely, like, accordioned, and I can't breathe, and I'm laying there, and I'm panicking, and all my first aid training comes in, and I'm like, okay, don't move, but I have to move. So I, I, I get off the tractor, and I fall on the ground, and I'm not still no oxygen, I'm laying there. Finally, my breath comes back, and I'm like, okay. So I yell at my brothers to come over. We had a, we had a foster brother at the time as well. He was 12. And I'm like, okay, guys, uh, go get help. Uh, the truck's over there. Uh, go, go get help. And don't let me fall asleep and don't move me. And so, of course, uh, all my brothers want the opportunity to save my life because I'm the greatest in the universe, of course. And so it's either that or they want to drive the truck. So all three of them, all three of them took off. And uh, next thing you know, I'm trying to yell without any breath. I'm like, get back here. So I had to actually, so I said, Kendall, Kendall, you go, the rest of you, keep me alive. Like, don't let me go to sleep. Don't let me, if I stop breathing, like call somebody or something. Of course, we didn't have cell phones at the time because I'm older. And uh, so you couldn't call for help. So my brother gets in the truck and we were way in the back of this bush trail and he hammers out. Uh, I don't know how that truck stayed in, in, in good condition. He said, I think he went 120 or 140 down the dirt road as a little 12 year old, made it to the neighbors about a mile away uh, in the truck. And uh, they gets there. They they call dad. Dad gets out to the thing, and and he's 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 standing beside me, and he's calling the ambulance. And uh, they're asking him too many questions, so he hangs up on the ambulance. And he wasn't. My dad's not a big first aid guy, so he just scoops me up, um, throws me in the, the the Volkswagen Jetta in those bucket seats, and I'm like screaming. And I have never been in a vehicle. Well, now I have, but at that point, I had never been in a vehicle going that fast before. I didn't know the Jettas could go that fast. I remember the one mile from the highway to the turnoff, uh, and he almost missed it, and he slammed on the brakes, and I, I almost passed out because the force on my body. And it was just, it was nuts. We were driving at one point, we're driving on a two-lane highway, and he's driving on the middle red, middle yellow line, honking the horn and pushing everybody out to the, out to the shoulders because he's going to save his son. And uh, we hammer in, we get to the hospital. Uh, they stretch me in. It's all, you know, it's, it's crazy. And uh, they do the x-rays and they're like, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with him. He's got some bruised ribs probably and uh, maybe a little bit of strain on his body. He'll be fine. Uh, just rest a little bit. So as, as a kid as I was, I was like, oh, I'm fine. As a matter of fact, I actually went to camp three days later uh, uh, to a summer camp that I worked at. And uh, I remember we, we were doing horse training and I blacked out on my horse. I just passed out because of the pain. Um, and then later that week, we were up at the devotion time and the special speaker was like, hey, everybody give somebody a hug. And so I was trying to get out of the crowd and everybody wanted to hug me. And I started getting dizzy because I couldn't breathe. And I started passing out. So I put my hand on the next guy's shoulder to give me a brace. And he turned around and hugged me until I finally just kind of fell down in the bush and hid away from everybody. Uh, and that's just part of the story. It was just crazy. I was in that much pain. Uh, and so that goes on. The, the pain starts going away. And I'm playing hockey that year. And I'm in incredible pain. I'm playing hitting hockey. And I'm like, 
I can barely like focus on school or on anything. And uh, I go to the Pan Am Sports Clinic and the guy's there like, I walk through the door and he's like, whoa, were you in an accident? I'm like, well, why are you saying? He says, your hips are crooked. And uh, so they took an x-ray and turns out, now this is like four months after the accident or three months after the accident. Turns out I've broken the bones in my neck. I've literally split my neck bone in half. It's separated. So now this is one bone split in half. It's separated and came back together completely fine, but it's now wrecked something in my neck. And so he's like, maybe you'll heal. We can't re-break your neck. Take it easy. Uh, don't lift anything more than five pounds. And of course, I don't obey because uh, I'm foolish. And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. Um, and so that, that went on for the year. I, next summer, I go back to camp and I am in pain all the time. I go back to the doctor. He's like, stop lifting things. Uh, it's, it could kill you. Like if your neck shifts at all, uh, it could kill you. It's going to heal wrong. I'm like, okay, okay. So I get to camp and uh, uh, I'll try to make this story a little bit shorter. Long story short, the horses kept getting out. The fence was broken. It was made with railway ties, which are like 120 pounds each or something. And uh, the maintenance guys were being lazy. And I'm a 17-year-old kid at this time. I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm like, that's it. I'm going to fix this. And so I walked down the hill one day, grabbed a railway tie, uh, threw it on my shoulders, um, walked back up the hill, put this railway tie in, and almost passed out because of the pain. Um, and I'm like, whoa, that was a mistake. Uh, that night, somebody kind of gave me a shoulder rub. And I remember waking up in the morning, and everything seemed wrong. I just woke up, and everything seemed wrong. And I don't know what happened. We still don't know what happened. But I woke up, and there were – I don't. I can't show you now because now I'm a little bit – bigger than I was before uh, but the, where your collarbone is uh, that was big holes and like if I had a shower it was full of water all the muscles on my upper body just disappeared almost overnight I got worse and worse and worse and I went to the hospital and uh, incredible pain and I remember for a year from when I was 17 till I was 18 uh, I'd come home from school and as soon as I walked in the door I'd throw my shirt off uh, because even the pressure of my shirt uh, felt like somebody was sticking me with like hot needles all over my body because I had nothing to protect my nerves. Everything was like fragile inside of me. I lost all my muscle mass uh, and, and I never had that much to start with, but I lost like, I looked really bad. I, I couldn't find the picture for you guys today, but I looked really bad. There's a picture of my dad with his hands on my shoulders and I am in pain. And so... Uh, I graduate high school that year, and before I graduate, I make a plan to go over to Indonesia with my friend uh, Joel. His parents were missionaries there, and I went over to—I was going to go with him. And so I, I, I got on the plane, and I went with this family all the way over to Indonesia. And uh, first of all, it was a trip of a lifetime. Lifetime, it was great, but. Being an 18 year old kid in a, in a home that's not used to me there, uh, there were a, to a couple times where things got rough. It was like, you know, I felt a little bit alone in a family's, there's a family trip with me being the, the third wheel. And um, I remember being in incredible pain before I left. It was horrible. I got there and I just began to pray every day, not for healing. I just, I was lonely at times. Uh, there were a lot of times where you were just driving places for 10 hours. And I began to just pour myself into the word. I read through the whole the whole Bible, I think an entire Bible uh, while I was there. Uh, I spent a lot of time in prayer and uh, just spending time with God. All of a sudden what I realized is I started feeling better. And I didn't realize at first what was happening, but I started feeling better. And uh, I was only there for, I think it was five weeks maybe. So not enough time for anything to happen. I, I get home and I'm like, man, that was a life-changing trip. God just moved in my life deeply. We saw, we were with, we went to a whole bunch of tribes, different tribal areas. We saw some, saw some, just some crazy things, some wild things. I could tell you stories of that trip for days. Uh, it was an incredible trip. Um, we saw these other, you know, these different temples and things. It was very interesting. Um, and, uh, but the most interesting thing was that I came home and my family looked at me and said, something's changed. Um, and so I think two things changed. First of all, I was feeling close to God. Me and God were like this. I was like, wow, I prayed like I've never prayed before. Wow, how incredible is God? But the second thing that changed is those muscles that disappeared. The first thing my family noticed was that somehow in five weeks, I went from, from having no muscle mass at all in my body to having my shoulders back that looked like shoulders. I, I, I looked like a regular 18-year-old kid all of a sudden. And so, and so I, I go tell my dad, I said, dad, I feel amazing. This is incredible. I don't know what's going on. Um, and he said, well, Rick, why don't you shoot your bow and arrow? I've told this in church before. I couldn't pull back 20 pounds on my bow. Um, 
and my bull went up to 60 pounds. I couldn't even pull back 20. Uh, when I left, I couldn't pull my bow back at all. And it was usually at 40 pounds. And so I, so I grabbed my bow and I'm like, okay, see if I can pull back 20 pounds. And my dad's there. I think my brother's there. And I'm like, watch this. And I pull it back like it is nothing. Like I'm like, wow, it's 20 pounds. Like my muscles are all back completely better. I can pull back 20 pounds all day long. My dad says, hey, you want to tighten that thing up? I said, sure, grab the, grab the, grab the Allen keys. He grabs the Allen keys and I flip that thing over and, and it won't tighten up. And he, my dad starts chuckling as, as my dad always does. Hey, there, hey there, Paul. My dad started chuckling like he always did. And he said, he said, Rick, while you were away, uh, we were using your bow and arrow and your brothers are getting strong enough to pull back 60 pounds now or close to, uh, you're pulling back 60 pounds. And, and I look at that and I thought, wow. I, when I left, I couldn't pull back 20. Um, I see the stones are on high, guys. When I left for, for Indonesia, I couldn't pull back 20 pounds. People thought I was dying. I thought I was dying. Um, I couldn't pull back anything. I was sick. I was in pain every single day. And I'm off in Indonesia for five weeks, and I come back with stronger muscles than I've ever had literally in my entire life till I was 18 years old. I had never been able to pull back that kind of weight in my entire life. And in a stretch of five weeks with no exercise, uh, not eating that much food, just simply spending time with Jesus, he chose to, he chose to heal me even before I asked. You know, I'd asked for years. People would say, man, I can pray for you. I've got faith. I'll pray for you. All these people praying for me and nothing happened. And yet God in his own incredible timing said, Rick, now's the time for you to experience a miracle. And I went back to being as strong as I'd ever been in my life, stronger than I'd ever been. And the interesting thing is that I still, I'm going to end the story here, but I went through another two years where I was fully strong, but every time I'd stand up out of a chair, I'd pass out. I'd get out of my car. This is kind of a funny story. I'd get out of my car, go to Bible school. I'd, I'd get out of the car. I'd stand up. I'd get dizzy. I'd grab the, I'd grab my, my, the door and I'd grab the side of my car and I'd pass out while I was standing. I'd fall down and, and because I had my hands on the door, I'd close the door on my head, just close the door on my head and it would wake me up and I'd be like, whoa. And then waking up, moving my head from my chin, my chest to up. That was too much movement. I'd pass out again. There was a time I smashed my head in the door six times before I fell over backwards. And, uh, uh, Heather, we just, uh, we were dating, I think at the time, maybe we'd just been married at that, at that time. And Heather was just like, wow, uh, are you okay? And so for two years, I would pass out, but the pain was gone. The, the weakness was gone. And then God took away the passing out. And yes, today I still have headaches. I still have a bit of memory loss because of the accident. It affected my, it affected my thinking a little bit. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I have never been so blown away by such an incredible God that uh, he chose to heal me, uh, and, and I still have signs, I still have, if you want to call them, scars of what has happened in my body, uh, but we serve an incredible God, and uh, he, has, he has healed me, uh, he has worked in me, he has changed me, uh, he makes me better simply by spending time with him, and he makes me better mentally, he makes me better spiritually, and he makes me better um, physically when I spend time with with God. So I just want to encourage you guys in that. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to this about just how God chose uh, to heal me when I gave him time in my life. And that doesn't mean everybody's going to get healed. It, it just means that that's what God did for me. And I am so incredibly grateful. Uh, so uh, just continue in this time when you're alone. Spend time in the word. Spend time in prayer. And I believe that God's going to do some incredible things in your life because we serve an absolutely wonderful and awesome God. So God bless. Have an incredible week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and next week, Wednesday, I'm going to show another, share another just thing that God has laid on my heart. Uh, and maybe you want to tune in on Sunday and uh, as we talk about being full of the Holy Spirit, uh, which kind of goes in line with this message, with, with this kind of story from today. So thanks, guys. Uh, have a wonderful evening. God bless.